Hello, welcome to Awakening with Soul Inspirational. My name is Tish, and today we welcome you back to another Soulful Sunday. So the faces or the people that you see here sitting around the table, you may recognize them um, from last Soulful Sunday. So this week, um, I just recently lost a buddy who was like a second mom to me, and I thought that having today's discussion being about death, um, and hopefully in a very uplifting way, that maybe you know we can share some of our insights, our experiences. So for those of you at home that may be going through something right now, maybe uh, somebody's at the end of life, or you've lost somebody recently, or even you know decades ago, maybe you can gain some insight or some comfort from today. So when I brought this up the other day. Rick, how did you put that? It's uh, inevitable. Death, the inevitable. And boy, yeah, I have actually been thinking a lot how you put that too. So whether it is somebody that you have already lost, you're on the verge of losing, or for ourselves, um, yes, it's a very complex personal subject. So there are some things that My dad had passed when I was 21, and when I was 18, he said some words to me that um, that were pretty profound. At least I thought so. And each time I've lost somebody, I've, I've thought about them. And you know what? I want to talk about it in context, too, of those of us that may be on our spiritual journey as opposed to maybe those of us that aren't. So. A brief little history, my dad was diagnosed with pancreatitis when I was like 10 or 11. Um, so at the age of 18, at this, when I was 18, he was so sick at that point. And he reminded me that, he said, honey, when I pass um, and you cry, which you're going to do because I'm your dad and you love me, he said, I want you to know that um, it's out of your own selfishness because I'm going to be in a better place. I won't be in pain anymore. And, um, and that stuck with me. And then he also was talking to me about how death is really about the living. Because once somebody is gone, they're gone. Uh, but it's those of us that are still alive that are grappling you know, with our grief, um, missing that person, whether it's the conversation, um, holding them, whatever it may be. Only when my dad had passed, I wasn't on my spiritual journey yet, and it brought a lot of anxiety, a lot of angst. I didn't want to go to sleep at night because I, I don't want to put all that out there. I just I had a hard time even sleeping, and I was 21, and he passed. He was 49. So um, 10 years later, when my mom had passed, he was already on my journey, and I remember watching John Edward crossing over for like six months before she passed. So at that moment, the, the night that she had passed, after I said my goodbyes, I laid down because I didn't know when it was going to be and I just wasn't strong enough to watch like the final breaths. And she came to me in a dream. And with all the issues that we had growing up, I finally had my mother in the way that I so had wanted throughout my 31 years. And it was beautiful, and as my best friend nudged me to say that mom had just passed, I had the biggest smile on my face because I got my mom. I had that gift of while I was sleeping, her coming to me. And it was that best friend who woke me up that night. It was her mom who passed this week, um, it, which was like a second mom to me growing up. And I'm going to give a little brief story, then however we want to jump off of this. Brenda had asked me if um, I was just going to go to the calling hours. You know, let the family, because Brenda and I have kind of, our paths don't always cross anymore. But then she reached out and she asked me, she asked me to speak at her mother's funeral, which was an honor. And then my next thought was, oh my God, what am I going to say? And I was kind of disappointed in myself because I, I've said something similar before, but I never put it in context with this person from the time I was nine that I've known her for 38 years. 
that how much she meant to me. And I went to the funeral, like, I'm celebrating this woman's life. And I got up there, and it, like, I couldn't even get my thoughts together because there are all these things that she had brought to me that I always took for granted. So one of the things that, that I want to bring out in this conversation are eulogies. Eulogies. And, and I think you guys may have heard me talk about this before, that so often we wait until somebody passes and we write up this beautiful, wonderful thing about the person who has passed, and we don't tell them in life. And when we can take the time to think about, and, and I think it's part of the reason why I love to just honor people that are in the group. When we can take the time to show those that we love right here today that, you know what, you know, if you were to pass, this is, this is what I would say about you. This is how much I love you. This is how much I care about you, what you've brought into my life, how much you mean to me. But we can say that in life, and I think it takes away some of those later regrets that we may have. Um, so, so with that, I am going to just put the... <laughs> this death topic on the table. So if anybody has stories that they would like to share or some insight, some wisdom from your own experiences. I think it's just a, this is very general. You know, I think it's a very Hallmarkian sentiment, but it's just, it's really so true. I think life is fleeting. We are here for the blink of an eye, you know, the time that we have, you know, some of us have a little bit longer than others, some of us have a little bit shorter, so what are you waiting for, you know? What are you waiting for to tell someone you care about that you care about them? What are you waiting for to go after a dream that you've always wanted to do? Why are you wasting one more s second stuck in a job that you hate, in a relationship with someone who doesn't value you or cherish you? You know, this life is fleeting, so, you know, there's only now, and, you know, as I go forward, I'm trying my best to live in the moment, because people think of as a moment, of what a moment is, is something big and profound, but a moment could be something as simple as going for a walk outside and just you know, breathing in fresh air and letting that cool breeze hit your face. That is a moment that I think, if you're truly present in, can be beautiful. And in that moment, what, what you just brought up for me, not only on the day-to-day, -day, but especially when we know that somebody is nearing the end of life, when we have the gift of knowing mm -hmm. that this time is coming for us. Um, in this group, we are big huggers. And, you know, when somebody passes, it's like we miss that, that the physical side of them, those conversations, and just holding them or feeling their arms around us. Even though throughout the years I've been able to recreate, you know, I know what my dad would say, like, I could, I could hear him. But it's missing that physical touch. Yeah. And when we can hug somebody and feel the, that physicalness to, to really like we did in, in group the other night where you kind of recreate that feeling. Um, when you can hug somebody and be in that moment and really just right there, feel what their arms feel like around you, what your arms feel around them, with that chest to chest, that heart to heart, and just be in that moment take a little extra long for hugging and hold that moment because it may be something later where you can draw that back and where you can say I can still feel my mother's arms mm -hmm. wrapped around me. So I had a similar um, <clears throat> relationship like that with, with my grandma. My mom, um, well my grandma for the most part, uh, she raised me and it was just one of the things that I missed so much about after she died, especially because I was 17, which is still really, really young. Mm -hmm. um, 
just those moments of just sitting together and with her arms around me just telling me everything's going to be okay because she didn't have to fix the problem she just had to be there physically and i knew everything was going to be okay and i had those thank goodness like you said those memories of that that when i needed that arm or that encouragement i was present in those moments i shared with her before her passing that i could go back on that so i really relate to that it's beautiful yeah <clears throat> well, it's almost like I don't know where to begin. <laughs> um, to me, death isn't the final thing. Uh, for, from what I've come to understand, I used to think that when you died, it was it. You know, you just, I mean, you know, going, growing up in certain churches, they tell you there's either heaven, there's hell. You're going one place or the other. But recently I found out that's not true. And which is really good because I know that when somebody that's close to me passes, they're, I'm going to see them again. You know? Um, I don't know. It's just kind of hard to put your finger on it. But like those of us who do have the ability to talk to people that's passed on, we know they're, they come back to us. They're physically gone. You miss their hugs. But they're still there. And life goes on after this. I mean, who knows how many times we've been here. Mm -hmm. I know, I, I don't know the exact number, but I'm pretty sure I've been here hundreds of times, if not thousands. I'm a very old soul. Uh, so, knowing that now and realizing that, it's just like, I don't necessarily fear death. I don't necessarily, because I know that there, there is definitely something better on the other side. Uh, and the comfort when you uh, can see them or feel them or hear yeah. them, um, that there is something more than... Yeah. I mean, yeah, you do physically miss these people, and the good thing of it is you've got the memories of them. And you know that... I mean, how many times have you felt their presence? How many times have you felt that, you know, this person's with me again. I mean, I've actually talked to my father. I've actually talked, I haven't talked with my mom yet, but I've actually talked, had conversations with my father who died in 1979. So it's like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's a sad thing, but, but the reality is, is we're multidimensional beings and we live forever, in my opinion. I mean, I can't force this on anybody else. This is just what I've come to know. So it's like, well, this is, this is just a stopping point. I mean, you're born, you, you, this is like the universal school of knowledge here. We're here, we come back time after time after time to learn something different. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't, sometimes we gotta repeat. And there will come a time where we don't have to do that no more. There will come a time where we'll, we'll just be the energy that we are. Everything's energy. So. Knowing this, I don't really, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'd be devastated if something happened to my family, you know, but it's just... Yeah, it still hurts. Yeah, it still hurts, but having that knowledge that, you know what, it's not it. They're there, they're still there, they're, they're going to be with me some more, I'm going to be with them later. Um, I tell my kids I'm going to creep on them. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's just like, you know, you think you're done with me? No, you're not. You know? <laughs> right, right. I won't want to. And, you know, as you're talking about the memories, too, one of the things that came up for me um, with Opal's passing this week is I actually reached out to my daughter and, and my son, um, and I, I asked them to please try to remember. Mm -hmm. First of all, when I pass, how wonderful would it be to, to leave this physical body hearing the sweet laughter of my children and my grandchildren? And, and I totally understand because losing people, that it's so heavy when somebody's on their deathbed. I asked my daughter when that time comes to try and find the strength to find the funny stuff. And I asked her to please go back because sometimes it's easier to hold on to the negative things of the past than to remember the, the fun and the good stuff. Mm -hmm. 
So I asked her to go ahead and start getting busy doing that, you know, so she can have these memories at the ready when my time comes. But to hear them share stories about how fun this was or what a great time we had doing that, to pass with their sweet laughter, I, it would be to me, for my soul, um, such a such a blessing. But again, also to remember that person um, being a medium and knowing that how the souls come to us. And when we think about them with emotion and they are there, the more we think about them in sorrow and grief, it, we are summoning their soul with that energy. So at some point, there's no timeline when we get through the grief and the pain to bring ourselves back to the memories of the laughter and the joy and the excitement because that's how we're summoning back their soul for them to be present. Um, in that moment, so. All right, I'm gonna to toss the spin on it. Uh -oh. <laughs> you know, humans, as we know, you know now, how you are now, in physical form, they don't give love, and I guess that's kind of what you're talking about, where they don't give it till after people are gone. Now, when you're, you're young, you're growing up, how many people actually in their families were giving back and forth, and, and where the grandparents were really giving to the children or the, the children were allowed to give love or was it blocked? So I view death as the greatest blessing there could ever be. Absolutely. And I'll tell you why. When, you're, when you grow up in situations like that where you're not allowed to give love and you're not allowed to receive it, the first love you know is from someone who dies and comes to you. I have had the most, the only, outside of my children <laughs> and have loving relationships through death. I could I, I look at my family now and <laughs> I, I I wouldn't give them the gift of death. That's how hard that was growing up. Uh -huh. I wouldn't give them that wonderful gift. You know. To, to even be able to come to me with love or have me have to express that to them. That's where, you know, that's how that would be. My, my, my only, I have zero fear of any of that. I don't care if I drop dead tomorrow. I really don't. On the way out of the door, I could trip fall. <laughs> but I, <No. laughs> I, there's nothing there with me. If you don't, it's, you know, that's not an issue. The only thing that, you know, is, is I, I, I want to experience my children. That's the only thing, really, I could do everything else I'm doing now, dead, alive, the, who cares, you know. If, if I'm not being a medium here, I'm going to be on the other side bothering some okay. mediums here, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that's it. You know, it, it's experiencing my children, and that yeah. just isn't that in a nutshell. That's it. That, that's it for me. You know, well, you, you're all right. You, <laughs> I enjoy my time with you, but I know if I go, <laughs> I won't be long. Yeah, I know. So, and that's okay. You know, that's that's something that's very set between us. You know, and and that's okay. You're, I, I guess I just. You know how many times you're rolled around in thousands of lives, or hundreds of them, or maybe ten, and you finished up real quick. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And and it just doesn't matter to me. You know that that's a very personal thing for me. It's very hard to explain, but it doesn't matter. There's nothing I can't do dead that I can do alive, except for experience emotion. That's it. That's why we come here to laugh, to to cry. Because heaven's a happy place. Mm -hmm. You don't get to cry out of pain or and you know, people don't believe it, but we love that. You're, the soul loves those experiences. And mm -hmm. that's when you understand that and you can grasp that concept, in, in your greatest sorrow, will you laugh and laugh out loud. You know, that's how I feel about it. 
end of that. You know, that's how that is for me. When you find that moment, you're free. You've freed up everything. It's great. You did put a spin on things. Yeah. That's quite the spin. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very interesting. And boy, what a reminder to feel into your humanness yeah. while we're here. What else are you doing here? Yeah, yeah. All day, your, your thoughts are consumed by, what's this person going to think of me? How am I going to react? How am I going to do this? How am I going to feel? How to da 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 And then you're going to work and doing all this on top of it. And at the end of the day, you're going, what mattered today? Right. Mm -hmm. And then you find yourself taking the time to be in that moment. Yeah. So you, so you can't say, this mattered mm -hmm. today. Yeah. And that's it. Mm -hmm. it was, it's all about feeling. What did I feel? Yeah, so right on the other side, it just is. Mm -hmm. um, this is our, our opportunity to feel the anger, the pain, the hurt, the love, the joy, although it's love over there, but mm -hmm. all that, that excitement and feeling that balance, you know, without the, the, the dark, how could we appreciate the light, um, those different emotions. And, um, it's almost like you can't have one without the other. Yeah. yeah. It's like the law of attraction, you can't feel winning unless you felt lost. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. One feeling doesn't distinguish itself from another. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I guess that's why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> to feel it. To feel it. <laughs> um, to feel, to experience. Do you want to share your death experience? Um, yeah, my, my grandfather Mistakes. passed at my papa, and I, I talked to him a lot. He was more like my father than, than my father was. And, uh, but he he was okay. He he like your father. He gave me that gift of um, um don't don't cry. I'm, I'm gonna be better, you know. So when he died, I wasn't upset. And I'll tell you, I talk to him more now than I do that, uh -huh. you know. So he that was that's a nice gift to give somebody to to tell them that you know you're the this is you're sad. I'm not, you know. I'm ready to go. You know, that's a good gift to give someone, so they're not so upset, you know. Yeah, you're going to miss them, but that, what a gift to give. Like, I'd love to give my child that gift to make them be okay with me dying, mm -hmm. you know. If you annoy them enough, they will be. That's <laughs> <laughs> well, That's a whole other soulful Sunday. Right. right. Um, what did they leave me? <laughs> that's my legacy, uh-huh. Um, it, it, it is a it is a gift when we can, and, and it's been, and I'm assuming that it's similar when, when I, like it's bittersweet to think about dad's passing. A lot of times, and, and I know some people have pushed back against it when I say it's my selfishness. Like, I, I do believe that because mm -hmm. it's because he's not here where I can talk to him. Um, I mean, he is now the as I opened up my gifts, but back then for ten. Honestly, for 10 years, um, I felt like I was just in some kind of a, a void. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I literally, like, it, with his ashes, and it, it was just... And then I would remind myself of his words, that he's not in pain. He went through 10, 11 years of suffering. I watched it. I heard it. And that would always bring me back to, you know what, this... This is about him. It's not about me. Like, um, and now knowing what I know, working with the other side, whenever I need him, he's right there. But what I didn't know back then it was about being in the moment, hugging, feeling that embrace, feeling that heart to heart, so we can still kind of feel like we can recreate that. There's a difference about being here or being here. Yeah, there really is. Yeah. And one of you were talking about with life being so busy. And, and what does it matter at the end of the day? And, and that's it's an opportunity for growth. With your father, you had an opportunity for pain. Then, then you, you experienced that, you grew, you got to your mother, and what did you do? You laughed yeah. in, a, in a horrible moment. Yes. That's growth. Well, and a it was a beautiful, beautiful, and it's not to say that I didn't cry over her, and I right. haven't cried over her, but it's because of un things left undone. But what a beautiful thing to have that happen and and you felt so good for her yes. and for yourself. And 
And even after that, it allowed me to go back and reflect on Dad. Mm -hmm. So as we go through and we gain these, these wisdoms, and reminding ourselves too, but what a great thing at the end of the day to ask ourselves before we go to bed, what did today mean? What did I feel? No, I think that's great. Yeah, it is. It's a good perspective. Um, it's nice. Never it's thought nice. of it like that. Yeah. What did I it's feel today? Healing. Because I think when you can do that at the end of the night, you're kind of you're going to sleep with that energy, and then when you're waking up in the morning, then mm -hmm. um, you know maybe that next morning you're going to take a little more time. It's almost like your mother's death, and then you look back at your dad's, and her death helped you heal. Yes. From all that, yeah. you know, gee, that's powerful, you know, what a nice thing. Yeah. yeah. You just look back and you, all is forgiven, you know, all is well, and you are carrying that around and you don't even realize it. It's amazing. Huh. Mm. God. It's, it's amazing when you look at it that way, how fearless you can be, yeah. you know? I thought I was fearless before, mm -hmm. you know. You know Dangerous is what I was. But <laughs> not, now I'm fearless because there's nothing to fear. Mm -hmm. Everything I'm learning, I'm just learning. Mm -hmm. You know, it's nice. I'm ready to go. I mean, I don't want to go. I'm not right away. No, but no, 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 but, no, but, no, but it, it happens tomorrow. Yeah. You understand that it's I don't not have to go what, to work tomorrow. But it's been promoted. Right, right. <laughs> you know, uh, huh? You just understand it's not what you've been told your whole life what death is. Yeah. You know, once you really understand what death is and how it's a gateway to something better. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's it's uh, it's, gosh, I don't know. It, it just takes like three thousand pounds off your shoulders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're not going into some abyss. Um, yeah. There, the energy goes on, and and you know, before I close, the other thing that. Um, so often when we lose somebody, we can feel that heaviness upon our chest, the heartbreak that we call it. And through the years and what I've experienced, I have changed around the thought of that pain in the, in the heart, that heaviness. Um, instead of it being a heartbreak to me, it is the enormity of the love that I carry for that person that has passed, the love that I feel from them that they have brought me, it, it, on surface I think of it as pain and then I push back that no, it is, this is how much love there was between that person and I. So it's no longer painful, it's a reminder of wow, this was, this was big, like this was a lot of love and I get to carry it with me. Mm -hmm. And what a blessing. Mm -hmm. You changed the whole dynamic of, of weight. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> uh, Good. Smart. <laughs> so that, that went by fast. Um, so thank you to each and every one of you for sharing in this um, interesting topic. So until next time, thank you, be well, and namaste.